but one of you um, filled out your soul trade quiz and sent me your profile. Um, and this is what it looks like. So I want to tell you, um, you each have one of these or you have an opportunity to get one of these. And I want to tell you how to interpret it. So the first thing you do is you notice that this dotted blue line in the middle, that represents the divine spark. That's kind of the, the balance point. And you can think about that as where we're striving to get to. We don't want to be too high in a trait. We don't want to be too low. And as you took the quiz, you saw that, you know, the downsides of, of the extremes. So when we look at this, we start looking, well, where are my high points and my low points? So as I look at this person's profile, the first thing I noticed is they were high in humility, which means, um, so if you're low in humility, that means you're arrogant. And if you're high in humility, you can be kind of self-debasing. You cannot stand up for yourself. Okay, loving kindness, being high in loving kindness, that means you have a tendency to do too much for other people. And the same with honor, you're giving too much to others, but you're not keeping enough for yourself. So the three of those together point towards a tendency to maybe do a little bit too much for other people and not enough for yourself. Then we looked at um, being high in patience and low in enthusiasm and also high in fear. And so these three traits together tend to point towards not taking action. Um, enthusiasm is about taking action. It's about being proactive. It's about finishing tasks. Again, I talked about patience. Fear, if we're high in fear, it can be paralyzing. So this would be a tendency to, now we have doing too much for other people, and we have a, a tendency to not, to not take action and to wait too long. Now we add in being high in silence. So silence um, governs whether we speak, how much we speak and how much we don't speak. I'm being high in silence, what that tells me is there's a tendency to um, not make yourself heard, to not ask for what you want, to not kind of speak out. Um, and then I also um, notice that um, gratitude is a little bit below average. And gratitude is um, kind of recognizing and being satisfied with, with what we have. So if we kind of summarize, you know, what I'm, what I'm seeing from this profile is, you know, doing too much for, for other people, not speaking up or not asking for what you want, um, a tendency not to take action. Um, and then the two traits that were most out of balance, I'll go back to show you these, are humility and fear. If we kind of look at this, if you compare the humility and the patience at the top, you can see that humility is, is higher and fear is at that same level as, as humility. So those are the two most out of balance. So what that says is that, you know, these are some of the traits that are kind of at the core of this person's spiritual curriculum. And what we do in a Musar practice is that we would uh, start uh, with one trait and focus on that for a couple of weeks and then move on to the next trait. So for example, if we were to start practicing humility, uh, one thing we could do, and if you have the book, you'll recognize this soul trait spectrum diagram. This is another central part of the American Musar approach. These sort of spectrums um, and this kind of idea of a spectrum, that's true throughout Musar. I, I like focusing particularly on the spectrum in this way with focusing on the, the extremes, where if we have too little humility, we're arrogant. If we have too much, we can be self-debasing or we can let other people walk all over us too much. Alan Marinus has a focus phrase that he wrote, which is humility is about occupying a rightful space, neither too much nor too little. So, if, if I were starting this humility practice, I would say, okay, well, I'm a little bit too much on the self-debasing side. 
what that means is, as I'm reading and contemplating this material, is that, huh, I'm not occupying enough of my rightful space. I'm allowing other people to occupy too much of the space. So therefore, um, you know, what are some things that I can do to try to occupy more space? There's a couple parts to a Musar practice. The first part is to write down a focus phrase like this one uh, on a sticky note and to put one in your car and put one on your mirror and put one on your bedside and spend a couple minutes every morning just chanting that to frame your day to think about um, what, um, you know, how it could, could take up or occupy more space. Now, another important thing you want to do is you want to do a practice. You want to pick one thing you can do to step outside of your comfort zone. So at the end of the, every chapter, I have some, some ideas to suggest, well, how, what are some practices that I might take? And so here there were two uh, practices which I thought would be particularly helpful for this person. One is to speak more if you tend to be quiet. So if this is someone who's, um, you know, also their silence was out of balance, we could actually practice speaking, which is a silence practice to help bring our humility into balance. So for example, if this person was kind of the, tended to be the last one to ask a question, or if you think about like a meeting at a company or something, or a dinner party, maybe this person tends to be more quiet or doesn't like volunteer to speak, maybe to speak up a little bit, a little bit more. Um, you don't need to dominate the conversation. You don't need to suddenly become, you know, a great speaker and orator, but just to find ways to engage and speak out a little bit more. Another one might be engaging in self-care, you know, with the honor and the loving kindness being out of balance a little bit. That can mean if we're doing too much for other people, we don't, uh, we don't leave enough time for ourselves. So, um, you know, if you're into massages, maybe that means scheduling in a massage. It could be something as simple as um, bringing it together with, with the speaking is learning to say no to things. You know, no thanks, I'm not going to do that extra assignment, uh, which is really your job anyway. Um, I'll let you take care of that. And I'm going to go home at a decent time and I'm going to shut off my computer and I'm just going to take a nice bath. I'm just gonna relax and I'm gonna watch the basketball game. Or I'm gonna take a nap. I'm gonna to go to bed early. Or I'm gonna go hang out with my kids. Or I'm gonna call my adult children. But these kinds of self-care activities, um, suddenly when they're put in this kind of spiritual context, they can help give us a way to break some of these habits. And to kind of bring it to the forefront, gee, I really am, um, doing other people's work for them. Or gee, I always feel so bad and so guilty if I say no to somebody. Oh, they need somebody to plan and organize, you know, this event at the, at the synagogue. Or they need somebody to make flyers for the neighborhood event. Well, you know, it's wonderful to do those things, but if it's taking away from other parts of your life, if you're angry and resentful when you're saying yes to them, um, or if you're feeling, if you're saying yes, because you're feeling guilty, this is an opportunity to kind of start to feel a little bit okay by, by saying no. 